All right, thanks for watching. And in this video, I want to show you how to diagonalize a two by two matrix. For example, let's diagonalize the matrix seven two minus four one. And of course, if I can do it, so can you. So let's find the eigenvalues. So suppose this is A, and let's find the eigenvalues. And to do that, all we have to do is calculate determinant of lambda i minus a. By the way, for all the liams out here, this is for you, because this is li minus a. So li a, and then with an m, that's li a. Or all the li a's also out there. And by the way, I calculated lambda i minus a to get rid of sign mistakes at the end, but it's totally fine to also do a minus lambda i. Oh, so for all the Ali's over there, you know, that's also fine. And equivalent, because you want to set them to zero. So let's do determinant of lambda i minus a, which means on the diagonals, you put lambdas, and then everything in the matrix, you put minus. So minus 7, minus 2, 4, and minus 1. And again, seems paradoxical. Why would I do all the minuses here? It makes the end of it easier. Ah. OK. And now let's calculate the determinant. So it's lambda minus 7, lambda minus 1, and then plus, so if you want, minus 4 times minus 2. And it's weird because it looks almost factored out, but the thing with eigenvalues is best to expand everything out here. So let's foil it out. Lambda squared minus 8 lambda plus 7 plus 8. And that's lambda squared minus 8 lambda plus 15. And let's factor this out because we want to set it equal to 0. And I believe in this case, it becomes, I think, lambda minus 3 times lambda minus 5. Because the product is 15, and the sum is minus 8. And for eigenvalues, we want to set this equal to 0. Which tells you that either lambda equals to 3, or lambda equals to 5. So we have effectively found the eigenvalues. Eigenvalues, OK. So let me write that down here. Lambda equals to 3 and 5. And the next step is, for each eigenvalue you found, find a null space. In other words, find the um, eigenvectors. In fact, let's keep this. That was lambda i minus a. And by the way, the reason I left it in this form is because you had like lambda squares turning around. If you use a minus lambda i, you would have lots of minus lambdas. And you're, at that point, you might be too tired and make a sign mistake. OK, now, again. For every eigenvalue, you want to find null space of lambda i minus a. So find, in this case, null space of 3i minus a. It looks like you have to recalculate stuff, but no, because remember, that was lambda i minus a. So all you need to figure out is to plug in lambda equals to 3. So that's null space of 3 minus 7, minus 2, 4, and 3 minus 1, which becomes null space of minus 4, minus 2, 4, 2. Yay, 42. And then you just do one more row reduction. You do one more row reduction. So if you row, row, root it, row, row, row reduce this, if you want, uh, divide both things by 2 or minus 2. So 
two, one, two, one. And then this row reduces, so two, one, zero, zero. And how do you find a null space? You just solve the equation ax equals to zero. So two, one, zero, zero, xy equals to zero, zero. And again, this is what you want to find. Gives you 2x plus y equals to 0, and 0 equals to 0, which is not very interesting. And then, this gives you y equals to minus 2x. And remember, you want to find x, y. So, maybe let me erase this. So x, y equals to x and minus 2x. But this is the same as x times 1 minus 2. And because x was arbitrary, this tells you that the null space is just the span, null space of, I guess, uh, a 3i, uh, sorry, a 3i minus a is just equals to the span of 1 minus 2. In other words, the eigenvectors corresponding to 3 is just 1 minus 2. And just two remarks are in order. First of all, uh, this is never 0. If you find that you find the null space is zero, then you definitely made an algebra mistake. Either you found the wrong eigenvalue or you made a mistake in your row reduction because by definition of eigenvector, uh, you should always, it's not the span is not zero. So an eigenvector corresponding to three i minus a, an eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals to three, is really a vector such that this null space is non-zero. And second of all, it's normal that the eigenvectors are always in the form of span of something, because if v is an eigenvector, then so is any multiple of v. Always forms a vector space, again, corresponding to one eigenvalue. OK, and let's just do the same spiel, but with lambda equals to 5. So the null space of you know, 5i minus a well that's the null space. In this case you just plug in lambda equals to 5. So remember lambda i minus a was lambda minus 7 minus 2 4 lambda minus 1. Plug in lambda equals to 5. You get 5 minus 7 minus 2 4, 5, minus 1, and that's the null space of minus 2, minus 2, 4, 4. How nice, you can simplify this. So that's the null space of 1, 1, 1, 1, and that's the null space of 1, 1, 0, 0. And now, let's solve the equation this, x, y, equals to 0, 0. That just means x plus y equals to 0, so y equals to minus x, and therefore xy equals to uh, x minus x, dos x, okay, which is x times 1 minus 1. And therefore, what this tells us is the null space is just the span of 1 minus 1. In other words, an eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals to 5 is 1 minus 1. So great, we found the eigenvalues, we found the eigenvectors, and the question is how do we write down our answer? So, usually in linear algebra problems, they don't say, hey, you know, find the eigenvalues, find the eigenvectors. What they say is, Find matrices A and P 
such that, so find, uh, sorry, uh, dnp with a equals to pdp inverse. And in another video, I'll give you a cool Legend of Zelda analogy explaining why this means that A is like D. Or A is similar to D. So basically, find matrices D and P such that A is similar to D. But what are the requirements? Well, P is invertible, and D, as it says, it's diagonal. And this is why it's called diagonalization. We want to turn A into a diagonal matrix. And here's the cool answer. D turns out to just be the matrix of eigenvalues. So since it's diagonal, here we have 0, 0. And you put the eigenvalues here, 3 and 5. And for P, you just put the corresponding eigenvectors. And here the order is important. If you put 3 here, you have to put the eigenvector with 3, which in this case is 1 minus 2. And if you put 5 in the second column, the second eigenvector has to be 1 minus 1. And there you go. You find, you, you know, successfully diagonalize this matrix. And there are many, many, many applications of diagonalization. I invite you to look at some of my other linear algebra videos to see how cool that is. All right, so if you really like this linear algebra extravaganza and want to see more videos, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.